Good morning, and uh, certainly I'm grateful that you are joining me in this time together as we study the Word of God. We are in Psalm 7, and Psalm 7 is recounting a variety of characteristics and qualities that are true of God. Uh, yesterday, for instance, we looked at the fact that true judgment, God is judge. Today, we're going to look at true justice, uh, that God enacts absolute and good, faithful, deserving justice that's in, in, in concert with and consistent to his character and nature. So before we get into Psalm uh, 7, starting in uh, verse 12, uh, let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord, you are unmistakably holy. And everything good will be praised in and by you. And everything that is inglorious and wicked and against your design will be judged. And your justice, your setting right of everything will be enacted. God, it's so easy for us to live our lives as if you are not there, or if you are there, that you are passive and permissive. God, help us to appreciate the deep work and reality of what you accomplished and did in your son, Jesus Christ, that shows us, reminds us that you are not passive or permissive. But you are powerful and passionate to maintain your glory and will as the judge of all the creation enact your pure and perfect justice. I pray, O oh God, speak to our hearts and minds and call us to faith and renewed faith in Jesus as our only hope. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, well, not to start out our day, but this is uh, on a dour, sour note. This is the passage before us. Psalm 7, starting in verse 12. <clears throat> if a man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and readied his bow. He has prepared for him his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. This psalm paints a picture of the swiftness and certainty of God's justice. That God is not passive nor permissive. God will set all wrongs right. Meaning that what they deserve, the payment or punishment they deserve, God will execute. And so, and justice is not just negative, it's not just correcting wrong, it is also complementing right. And so God's justice here, these, these, this passage here tells us that God's justice will in fact come into our lives and be affected in our lives, sometimes directly by God and at other times indirectly through means. Starts in verse 12, that one who does not repent. See, there is mercy. That just to think that God is in heaven and angry and, and just doing everything he possibly can to hold back and restrain an explosion of his fury is ridiculous. God is unbendingly holy and righteous, but God is unfathomably loving and kind. And these are not at odds with one another. 
So God provides us the opportunity to repent. But if a man does not repent, that's, see, do you hear the clause here? This is the condition. If we don't repent, God will wet his sword, for he has bent and readied his bow. See, God does not bring judgment and justice into people's lives only because they deserve it. God brings judgment and justice into our lives because we deserve it and we would rather live in the condition and the circumstance of deserving it rather than having it done away with. Now, what do I mean by that? God's justice, one way or another, will be enacted against each and every one of us, but it will either be enacted against us in Christ, meaning where Christ has borne and bared the punishment we deserve, and by grace through faith, we trust Jesus. Or God's justice will be enacted against each and every one of us outside of Christ, meaning that we alone will bear the punishment we deserve. Jesus came as our punishment bearer. That is why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me, because Jesus is the only punishment bearer there is that can remedy and rectify our condition and our problem so that we can be rightly restored to God. God's justice, when acted and enacted against us, will come in the, the same form, but it'll either be enacted in Christ on our behalf or it will be enacted on us. This is why faith in Jesus Christ is so desperately important. This is why knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, cherishing Jesus, trusting Jesus, depending upon Jesus, and not only for us, this is why sharing Jesus and spreading the message of Jesus Christ and inviting others to trust and know Jesus because justice by God is inevitable. It is coming. But we are either treated by God's justice in Christ and then experiencing pardon and freedom and life, or it'll be enacted against us outside of Christ where we experience the full weight of his fury and we will be barred and banished from his presence forever. This is unmistakably clear throughout the entirety of God's word. This is the message of the gospel. This is what the church is and why the church is here to encourage those that are in Christ and to evangelize the, those that are not so that God's justice might be born for us and on our behalf in Christ. That's the text of scripture. And so David prays and sings, if a man does not repent, if we don't repent. This is why I talk so much about sin and confession and repentance, not just because I'm a Debbie Downer, not because I'm negative, not because of, of any of these things, because I know the only way to be restored to God is through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. And I want that for you so badly. And I want that for our neighbors and the nations. And don't you too. Let's pray. God, call us to yourself and may we be freed. May we abandon any effort to deal with our wrong and our sin and our wickedness and our rebellion against you. May we abandon any effort other than in Christ to be made right with you. And may we call other people to that same relationship of faith and trust and dependence in Jesus Christ. Move in our hearts, O oh God, that we would live joyfully before you as the true judge and the enactor of true justice, for it has been born on our behalf in our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh Lord, in his name. Amen. Well, Lord, be with you. Thank you for joining me this morning, and I pray that the word of God would bear rich fruit 
to repentance and righteousness in Christ in your life and in my life. I'll see you again tomorrow.